Someone say, thank God for the Word. I know I say that every week, and I'm going to keep on saying it. Where would we be without His precious, holy, written Word? Amen. And in fact, uh, in fact, the title of my message today is along those lines. It says, the, the title of my message, the greatest force in the universe, God's holy written word. Wow. All right. We're going to go there today. But uh, hey, let's give our Facebook audience a round of applause. We're so glad you've joined us today by YouTube. Thank you so much. And we believe God's going to minister to you as he does everyone here in the house. Let's pray and we'll get right to it. Father, we're so thankful, thankful for your precious holy written word today. And as we look to your word, we trust the Holy Spirit. May you think through my mind and speak through my mouth and bring revelation through my spirit. Father, may you watch over your word to confirm it with power and the Holy Spirit, Father. We declare over everyone here in the house and within the sound of my voice that you are good ground, that you hear the word and receive it and bear fruit. I said and bear fruit. Some 30, 60, and finally a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you are glad the Word of God bears fruit in your life, right? I'm not talking about apples and oranges and grapefruits and all that kind of fruit. I'm talking about, come on, results, productivity in your life and in every area of your life. That's what the Bible does. Do you understand today that the God's holy, precious, holy written Word has been around for a long time, right? And in fact, it's the best seller of all time. By far, by the way, none, you know, the, the, the Word of God, the bestseller by far, far but it, it, it's powerful. I, I want you to notice this scripture in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. It says, for the Word of God is what? Alive and powerful. Other translation says it's living and active and sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between what? Spirit and soul and joints and marrow. It exposes the innermost thoughts and desires. Praise the name of the Lord. Did you know that your Bible, the Word of God, has life in it? Right? It's the most powerful force in the entire universe. Please understand that. I don't know, many people... The Bible's sitting around in their, in their, in their house on the, on the living room table, the family Bible, been there since grandma, and, and, and they look and say, oh, the beautiful Bible, isn't that wonderful? And, but many times, it just lying dormant there, and, and many of the families realize that there's an exploding power in the Word, and they don't even realize that to help them in life and to bring victory to them in every area of their life. And many people have no idea it's the most powerful force in the entire universe. God's word, but many times untapped. It's just dor lays dormant in everybody's house. But the word of God, we just read it. It's a lot. You can, you can find these same words in other books, Reader's Digest, right? In other books, but there's just, there's just no. But the word of God has power. Life. To any situation. And so, uh, I, I, as you know, Cindy and I went to Alaska to see the, to the northern lights. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's on her list of 300 things, you understand. You've heard me talk about it before, right? 300 things. And I'm like, Lord, we got to see these northern lights. I can't, I can't keep coming. It's so, oh, it was so cold. Oh, my goodness. We went into Anchorage. Alaska, that's where we stayed, but to go out to see the northern lights, we went on this tour, we had to go three hours drive, three hours north, and the farther north, the colder it got, one degrees, and then the wind chill, minus 15 degrees, oh my, I'm like, Lord, please let these lights show up, I can't keep coming back here to get this checked off the list, I mean, God is so good, he's so kind. But we, we saw uh, these, these northern lights. In fact, we, in fact, we got a picture of you. 
and uh, let's, let's put a couple of pictures. And I mean, listen, when you look at the night sky there in, in Alaska, uh, oh my goodness, the stars are so, no light pollution. And this is just a little taste of what we saw. But uh, uh, the stars were so bright. And you can see the, the arm of the Milky Way. Do you see it right there? It goes right across. And our guide told us there's the arm of the Milky Way right there. Of our uh, of our our galaxy, and and uh, we have an, one more picture. We were just getting ready to go. The the, the northern lights. I know we look freezing there. It's like ah. Oh. We were just getting ready to take off, and because the northern lights, they're fluid. I mean, things change by the minute. And we thought, well, you know, it's it looks like it's almost done. We were getting ready to leave. Cindy looked over there and said, "Wait a minute, it's flaring up again," and the guide says. It sure is. We got out and we took one last picture and, uh, of those, of those uh, northern lights and the lights. It, it, it's just, just uh, beautiful. But uh, uh, how many of you understand today that the entire universe God created with the power of his word? And in fact, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 says, by faith we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command for God's word. That what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Right? God spoke it with a substance of faith. So much power in his word. Wow. And so we saw the arm of the, uh, of the Milky Way, uh, which, which, by the way, uh, is a spiral galaxy that includes our solar system. But I, I did a little research, and, and, and some believe that there are estimated up to 2 trillion galaxies out in the universe, at least as far as the Hubble scope can see. Two trillion with a T, galaxies, and we're, we're only one galaxy. And many believe the universe is expanding at the speed of light. When God said, light be, let there be light, and some of you are still going, wow. And I know it's popular nowadays, and you hear people, you know, especially some of these big stars and whatnot, they say, well, the universe decided this, and the universe this, and the universe that. I'm like, stop talking about the universe this. Why don't you look to the one who created the universe? Right? Just like the Bible says, it's not, the honor is not on the house. If you see a beautiful house, you don't give praise to the house. The one who built the house deserves the honor. Right? And so God created the entire universe, and so let's give the creator praise, not the creation, as the scripture says, right? And so I, I wanted just to point that out to you to see how, how powerful God is and his word. When God speaks, the word of God's stuff happens. There's power in his word. And when you and I take the word of God and we put it in our mouth and we start declaring the word, how many of you know there's power there as well? Amen? And so I, I, I want to, and I know, you know, when you look at the space and all the vastness of the universe and everything that's there, you say, wow, it's so massive, so huge. But did you know, despite all that, God still knows you and he loves you? Isn't that beautiful? That good to know? He cares about you. He knows everything about you. Someone says, how can God know about everything? There's so many, some 7 billion people on the planet. God got away. He's, he can figure it out, <laughs> right? He knows everything about He loves you. He cares for you. So in despite his vastness of his power and glory, please know that he's, he loves you and he cares for you. So I want to give you today three power secrets obtained from the Bible, God's written word. Three power secrets obtained from the Bible, God's written word. The first one is God's word, the Bible. Lest there be any doubt, 
Let's call it God's Word, the Bible, right? God's Word, the Bible, will power you out of every trouble to a victorious outcome. Did you know that? It will power you out of every trouble. Years ago, uh, we were on a motorcycle uh, trip with our motorcycle buddies, and uh, we were parked somewhere on our bikes, and we were having lunch. And a gentleman came up to me. We were, we were sitting outside eating by our, our motorcycle, and uh, a guy came up to me and says, wow, that's a nice bike. Thank you. And uh, he said, you know, I, I used to ride motorcycle, but I quit. I said, what happened? He said, well, I, I just, I, I was always laying it down, especially going around tight corners or hairpin turns. He said, the bike would always go down. And, and I, I said, I, he said, and, and I couldn't figure it out. And so finally, I just give it up. I said, I know exactly what your problem is. What? He said, I said, yeah, I can tell you exactly what your problem is. The problem is, is when you go around a turn, you're probably looking to the ground. And wherever you look, instead of looking where you want to go, you're looking to the ground and you corkscrew right down. Right? Plus, when you go around the corner, you got to power out of it. Any bike riders out there know what I'm talking about? Right? When you go on a, Alan knows, when you come around a hairpin turn and you slow down, when just before you're, when you're coming out of that turn, you got to give it gas and power out. He says, no kidding. I say, yeah. You didn't have to quit. Just to look where you're going and power out of that turn. He says, well, maybe I'll go out and get another. I said, go, go. Yeah. That's how, that's how you do it. How many of you know in the same way when you're going, you're in a tight spot in life and when there's trouble, you're in a hairpin turn. Right? And you're in, a, you're, you're in a problem situation, maybe in a family member, a loved one, maybe an illness, whatever it might be, a, 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 a trouble at work or at home. How many of you know God's Word, declaring the Word of God, will power you out of every trouble in life? Huh? Notice this scripture in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. And, and God is, is speaking to Joshua because Joshua, uh, Moses has just died. And Joshua now is taking over for Moses. And he's, he's feeling a bit overwhelmed like Moses is a spiritual giant. And now I'm supposed to lead the children of Israel across the Jordan River into the promised land. And he's thinking, man, I thought Moses was going to do it. Now here I'm supposed to do it, and, and he's, he's feeling a bit overwhelmed. So God speaks to Joshua, and he tells him exactly how he can power out of this trouble, of this challenge he's facing him. And God says to Joshua, study the book of instruction, in other words, the word of God continually. Now in Joshua's day, he didn't have the whole Bible that we have, but he did have the five first five books of the Bible that we have, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, known as the penalty of the first five books of the Bible. And God told Joshua, if you will feed on the Word of God, and if you will meditate in it, and look upon it day and night, you'll be sure to obey everything in it, then you will prosper and, all, and have success in everything that you do. Wow. I know there's a big, you know, quite often you see businesses or marriages or families and they say, what's the secret of your success? Well, we did this and we went this and we did 10 steps here and we did five steps here. God says, you want to have success in life, in your marriage, in your business, spiritually, physically, financially? God says, meditate upon my word, power in the word of God continually. And if you feed upon the Word of God that has power and honor the Word, everything you set your hand to do will prosper and have success. This is God's way. A recipe for success. Right? So Joshua feeding upon the... He said, wow, thank you, Lord, for that because I'm wondering how I'm going to pull this off. But if I feed upon your Word... In other words... Joshua, and, and you and I need to change the culture of our lives and our thinking to God's way. Because the world's way say one thing, but God's way says something else, right? 
And so if we honor it God's way, then God says you're going to have success and prosper in all that you do. And so he tells Joshua the next verse, this is my command. Joshua, I know you got a big task. I know Moses just passed. And I know you're concerned how you're going to lead these people over. But if you feed upon my word and you meditate and you let that be the culture of your life, make that a priority and, and, and be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged, Joshua, for the Lord your God is with you for wherever you go. And how many of you know Joshua crossed the Jordan and led the people right into the promised land based upon the power of the word of the living God? We can do the same thing today. Don't underestimate the power of the word, right? And let it become the culture of your life. And so, so when you're facing a problem, you're, when you're facing a challenge, how many of you know you can power through that? with the Word of God, and let, let the Word of God come out of your mouth and let it power you out of problem. Okay, so the second s- secret, I'm talking about three power secrets obtained from the Bible, God's written Word. The first one, God's Word, the Bible will power you out of every trouble to a victorious outcome. Secondly, God's Word, the Bible will bring healing and health and long life to those who prioritize it. Right? The Bible will bring healing and health. Notice Psalms 107, verse 1. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is what good? For his mercy, what? Endures forever. By the way, don't let anybody ever talk you out of the fact that God is good. I don't care what's going on in the world. I don't care what happens because we, as Pastor Mark said, we live in a world that's fallen. There's stuff that happens, but no matter what, God is good. Please know that, right? And his mercies endure how long? Forever. Well, forever is still going on right now, is it not? (laughs) So his mercies are still good right now. So he's good despite all the mess that's going on around us. And let the redeemed of the Lord, what? Say so. Start let stuff come out your mouth who has redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Though the enemy's out there, he's defeated. And so we can declare the word of the living Christ. And so notice, drop down to verse uh, 20. It says, he sent his what? Word. And healed them. And delivered them from their destructions. The word of the living Christ of God has so much power, it will bring healing and deliverance from every trying and every destruction. How many of you believe God's word is saying, come on, God's not just, he's telling the truth, right? And so the Bible will bring the word of God is healing. You know, a few months ago, many of you know, both of my parents, mom and dad, they're they're still alive and, and they both came down with COVID. They're in their 80s, upper 80s actually. And uh, a few months ago, they both had COVID. And so uh, I, just, I just cleared my schedule for a week or a little over a week and said, I'm going out to my mom and dad's and I'm gonna just going to take care of them. And, and so I did that. And, and I went out there and my, my parents, I tell you, it's, it's funny because uh, I told Cindy, I said, honey, we're not very good Christians compared to my parents because they, they pray and, and they're in the Word every morning and every night for an hour at least. <laughs> I said, they're better Christians than us. But, uh, <laughs> but I, 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 I've got a few pictures. We have a picture there, Lee, you can put up. There's, there's my dad. And so I went out there and stayed with him for a week. And so morning and night, you know, my dad's on his knees and he prays. And there he is in the Word. And, and uh, so morning and night, they're praying. By the way, they pray for the entire family. He pray for all of us kids and grandkids and great grandkids. He goes through the name, name, mom and dad, name and every one of them. May, may your hand be heavy upon them, Lord. May they come to Jesus. May they call upon them. May they follow your word. May they follow their divine destiny. And he's in the word all the time. And so here they were struggling with COVID. And, 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 and of course, when I was there, I would do all the the Bible reading, and they also had uh, devotionals that, that I read before we had prayer time. And so mom and dad are struggling with 
COVID, of course. And so I, I said, Mom and Dad, I don't know if you're aware of this scripture, but let me bring it to your attention. And I read from Proverbs chapter 20. Let's look at that. And, and, and uh, I said, Mom and Dad, look at this scripture. My child, pay attention to what I say. To talk, God's talking about his word. And listen carefully to my words. And don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart. For they will bring life, what, to those that find them, and what, and healing to their whole body. I said, Mom and Dad, did you know that every time you're reading the Bible, I don't care what book it is, I don't care where it's at in the Bible, did you know when you read God's Word that healing power is flowing into your body? And, and, and. Mom, my mom said, I, I never saw that before. And dad says, wow. And I said, so from now on, when, we read, when I read you the Bible, and when you read the Bible, please know that healing power like a medicine, because that word, that word health and healing is literally transferred medicine. When you read the Bible, it's medicine going into all your flesh and into your body. And mom and dad were like, it like brightened up. Like a light came on. And they said, wow. All right, well, we received that. And so when I read, and so then, then morning and night when I read to them, I said, now healing power is flowing into you. And they said, amen, yes, we receive it. And power started flowing in them. And, and did you know that that wasn't long after that? They recovered beautifully, and I took him to the doctor not long ago, and they got a clean bill of health. Dad got off oxygen, and he's going back doing, we're having coffee every week. Right, praise the Lord. But they got that revelation that the Word of God is like medicine. There's power that brings healing. Right, so I told mom and dad, because... Most of us, most of them, especially the older people, they have, a, they have a, a, a box of pills that they take that I'm like, how do you get all those pills down every day? Wow. You know what I'm talking about, right? It's got these, uh, Monday you got a box of pills and it's like, how do you take those, uh, let alone a week, let alone on one day? Pill, high blood pressure pills for this, pill for that, pills for that, pills. And I was like, oh my goodness. And so they got all these pills mom and dad are taking. And I said, okay, that's fine. And my dad says, well, I got to take this, that, and that. And first of all, I said, Dad, I said, listen, when you take those pills, stop speaking negative stuff about it. Just say that, that, that God will accelerate. Right? Because if you're going to take medication, which thank God for it, then mix your faith with it. That God will accelerate whatever medications you're taking and say, I mix faith with it. I mix the word of God with that. Then I'll get the, a, a positive benefit with no negative side effects. Right? Because my dad was all, I don't got any pills. And I said, Dad, stop it. I mean, you know, sometimes the kids become the, you know, the, the parents after a while, right? And he said, yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. And I said, Say, come on, mix faith with it. I get the benefit of this. God accelerate with no negative side effects. And then I said, and then I said, hey, listen, and when you take your prescription, per, prescription pills, don't for your, your prescription, don't forget to take your prescriptures. Right? When you're reading your Bible, you're taking your prescriptions, and when you're taking all your pills, don't forget to take the gospels. <laughs> right? Because you're taking all those things, and then you take the word of God, and you declare it, and you speak it out, and it's going in your body, and bringing life, and healing to all your flesh. Right? We just read it as life to you, and health to all your flesh. God sent his word and healed them. How many of you know there's no greater power in the entire universe than God's Word? And God's Word will come in you and, and drive out every sickness and infirmity. No negative side effects. The only side effects you'll get from His Word is joy, peace, blessings, and increase. Right? Praise God. And so know that God's Word, the Bible, 
brings healing, health, and long life to those who prioritize it. Praise God forevermore. And so, this is the way Cindy and I, we, we as I've said before, we regularly, we're getting ready in the morning, and uh, I'll just start saying things like, thank you, Lord, for your word right there. By the way, don't, don't, don't ever feel weird about speaking the word or praying or with your, those of you that are married. Just start speaking out. They're, they're fine with it. Right? Well, my, uh, you, you know, my wife's coming in or my husband's coming in. I guess I better be quiet. No, they, listen, listen. Guys, especially, your wife wants you to lead you. She wants you to declare the Bible, the Word of God, in your household, in your family, over your children. All my children and grandchildren shall go the way of God, and she's going to say, yes, amen. So we, we, we learned a long time ago, we just started speaking out. We just started declaring the Bible. We declare the Word, because there's power in the Word. The most powerful force in the universe, God's precious, holy, written Word. And we put it in our mouths. And so I'll just be, just be getting ready. And I'll just start saying, thank you, Lord. The blood in our hearts flow freely. The blood, our hearts pump blood freely through all our veins and arteries and capillaries of our entire bodies without clogging hindrance or delay. And Cindy will say, yes and amen. And, and, and I'll say, our, our, our blood is clean spiritually and physically. Clean. Pure. The life of the flesh is in the blood, the Bible says. If the blood is clean, your whole body is clean. So I say our blood is clean. The power of God flows in our body. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in our blood and in our body. How many of you know that's what the Bible says? And so that's what we declare. And then Cindy will start saying yes, and all my lips, she'll start saying this, and she'll start saying that. And she says, you know, and, 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 uh, uh, and, then, and then she'll look at me and say, honey, make sure, because Cindy told me a long time ago, she goes, uh, I don't do, honey, I, I don't do fat and I don't do bald, so you better do something about it, all right? So I, I'm like, I speak life over my hair, okay? Stay, stay with me. I stay in shape. <laughs> don't tell her I said that, but... But we just speak the word. We say we have the mind of Christ. That's what the Bible says. We have the mind of Christ. Now somebody says, well, you know, when you get older, you just start forgetting stuff and your brain cell starts dying and, and, and things start happening. And it says, stop agreeing with all that. Start saying what God says. His word. So Cindy and I, we say we have the mind of Christ. And by the word of the living God and through the power of the blood and the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, we, we, we receive our minds, receive and, 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 and retain and remember knowledge and information of the spiritual nature and, and natural nature for supernatural recall and memory. We have the mind of Christ. Praise God. I said praise God forevermore. And so you and I have this, the word of the living God. So let's not act like the world does, and let's not talk like they talk. Let's, let's talk within the culture of the word of God that we live by, right? And so God's word, the Bible, will bring healing and health and long life to those who prioritize it. And so, you know, especially Cindy and I, when we were in our early 20s, we just, we just sold out. We just, we just got hungry for the word, and we just sold out for it. Some of you know what I'm talking about, Missy. You know, We just went all in. We couldn't get enough of it. We changed the culture of our entire lives. During that season of our life, we didn't go home and watch whatever was going on on TV. We went home after work, and we got into the Word, and we just fed up on the Word and changed the culture of our thinking and of our words and our lifestyle, and we made God's Word that had power. This is the way we live. This is what we believe. This is how we walk in life, the love of God, the grace of God, the power, everything. When trouble comes and offenses come and challenges come, we have the Word of God. And I tell you, it brought us through. 
And it's still bringing us through today. And so, let me give you the third power secret. The first one, God's Word, the Bible, will power you through out of every trouble to a victorious life. And by the way, if you don't know nothing else to do to power out of a trouble, just uh, out of a circumstance, just start rejoicing and giving God praise. We have every reason to rejoice. How many times can I say it, Pastor Mark, right? If you don't know what else to do, say, Lord, I just praise you. I trust you because praise, thanksgiving, and worship is the language of faith. That's what faith sounds like to God. Lord, I trust you. I praise you right now. I don't know how we're going to get out. I don't know what's going on, but I know you're good, and I just rejoice, and I give you praise right now. I magnify you. You always cause me to triumph in Christ and just go to rejoice. Cindy and I rejoiced our way out of a lot of trials, pressure situations. And so the third power key I want to give you today is God's Word, the Bible, will bring permanent peace and joy to your heart and your home. How many of you believe that today? God's Word, the Bible, will bring permanent, in other words, a lasting peace and a lasting joy to your heart and to your home. Why should we have a, a, our lives and our homes be like those who don't even know God, who live in constant turmoil and distress? No. God's Word, the culture of His Word in our life and in our minds can bring a lasting joy and a lasting peace. Recently, we've been talking about Nehemiah, who you remember in our story of, of Nehemiah, how he, God stirred in his heart when they're, during the time of captivity, when Israel was in captivity, and that God stirred in his heart to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls and the gates that had been burned down. And uh, God gave Nehemiah tremendous favor with the king. And he went back and he began to rebuild. And also during the time of Ezra. And God revived his people. And I want to read from Nehemiah chapter 8 and uh, verse number 1. It says, by the time the seventh month arrived, the people of Israel were settled in their towns. They're coming back to Israel, back to Jerusalem. And all the people are gathered as one person in the town square. You understand, they're coming back from captivity to their homeland, to Jerusalem. And the water gate and asked for the scholar Ezra to bring the book of Revelation of Moses. The Bible, the first five books of the Bible that we have. Right here in our Bible. He said, bring that book. We haven't heard the word for so long. Our hearts are crying out for it. We're hungry. And he said, bring the book of Revelation that, that God had commanded for Israel. So Ezariah the priest brought the revelation to the congregation, which is made up of both men and women, everyone capable of understanding. And it was the first day of the seventh month. And he read it facing the town square at the water gate from early dawn until noon in the hearing of the men and women. Wow. And all who can understand. You know, from, from, from the sunrise to noon. You think I go long sometimes. Wow. But the people were so hungry for the word, they just, they just stood all who can understand it. And all the people listened. They were all ears to the word of God. And Ezra, the priest, stood up on a platform that he had built. And he just started reading from the word. And Ezra opened the book and every eye was upon him. He was standing on a raised platform. And as he opened the book, the Bible, the word of God, Everyone stood, and Ezra praised God, the great God, and the people responded, yes and amen, and with hands raised high. And then they fell to their knees in worship of God, their faces to the ground. Somebody says, I don't know about that hand raising stuff. Well, how many of you know they did it in the Bible when they heard the word, and they gave God praise, right? Mm, I could take off and go somewhere there, but. But here they are, Ezra reading, and Nehemiah the governor, along with Ezra the priest, 
the scholar, the Levites, were, were, were teaching the people. And they said to all the people, this day is holy to God, your God. Don't weep and carry on. They said this because all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the revelation. All the people, when they heard the word of God reading, they began weeping under the power of the word. It was so life-giving to them, so refreshing to them, that the people began to weep. And he continued to them and said, go home and prepare a feast, holiday food and drink, and share it with those who don't have any. This day is holy to God. Don't feel bad. Don't sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's where we get that scripture from. We all know that. That comes from Ezra and Nehemiah reading the word of God to all the people. And it brought joy to them. And the joy of the Lord is their strength. Wow. I wonder what would happen if you just, if you just turned to the Bible the, and, and, and just, just, just started reading it. I mean... It, Anywhere, I, I'm, just, I'm just looking looking randomly right now in my Bible at, at Psalm 88, Psalm 89. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand, O Lord, and high as your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Wow, wow a blessing right there. I just read something. <laughs> right? Bringing life and joy. To your life. And so I want you to know that God's word will bring permanent peace and joy to your heart and to your home. You know, when I was in my, my early 20s and uh, the boys were just babies and we were living on a ranch north side of town, working on the ranch. And as I said, Cindy and I were just getting immersed in the Word. It was changing the culture of our lives because we decided we wanted to be Word people and let the Word be prioritized. And this is how we live our life. And God dropped it in my spirit to read 10 chapters a day. And God just dropped it in my spirit. If you read 10 chapters a day, you can read the Bible in four months, the whole Bible. So I got, to, I got on my calculator and I did the math. And sure enough, 10 chapters a day, you get through the entire Bible. And so, uh, you know, I'm busy, I'm working on the ranch, I got kids. And so, but at lunchtime there on the ranch, we had a, in the barn, we had a, a, an office in the barn. And so uh, I had my Bible, one of my Bibles right there in the office drawer. And so Every lunch hour during that, those four months, I would, I would get my Bible out, get my sandwich out, open it up, and start reading. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God, but, you know, just start reading. And start reading as much as I can and get through. If I didn't get through the 10 chapters during lunch hour, then I would finish it up the next day. And before long, I couldn't wait till I get to lunch. Because after a while, you start getting a hunger for God's Word. Because right now, some of us are like, yeah, that sounds cool, but you know, I just, I got my favorite show going on, I got this, and I got, and I get all that, we, like, we enjoy all that too, but, but this, is, this is a time where, how many of you know there's seasons in your life where God will impress upon you, spend time in my word. And sometimes the God will have seasons in your life and says, spend time praying in tongues more. Spend time worshiping God more. Spend time in his word. Whatever season, this season was in the word for me. And so the more I got into the word, the more I, my, my spirit started craving for it. And like nothing's going to stop me from getting 10 chapters in every day. And so I read 10 chapters a day and, and keep reading. And, and, and it was so, trans so life-giving because we just read the Word of God. It's not like reading any other book or any other novel or any other magazine. And life, right? And health to all your flesh. And so I read 
10 chapters a day, and I was just trying, and so 10, and so sure enough, after four months, I read the entire Bible, and, and, and I was so blessed by it. And how many of you know you and I, we could do the same thing? Now, just let the Holy Spirit guide you in all those kinds. How many of you know what I'm saying, right? Let the Spirit guide you. Some of you might, he might say something different to you about how to immerse yourself in the things of God. But this is what happened. This is the journey that Cindy and I were on way back years ago. And once we changed the culture of our life, we decided this is the way we're going to live. And by the way, faith comes by hearing, not having heard. You have to stick with the word. Right? You stick with it. I saw some people said, you're to be commended to be commended because you're in church today, by the way. Somebody say, what are you doing? You're going down there, you're spending an entire morning of your day on Sundays down at church. You could be doing this, you could be doing that, you could be doing a lot of things, but you're, you're going to church and giving up, you know, by the time you get ready, you're, you know, your whole morning is gone. You're giving up half a day to be at church? They have no idea how precious and how powerful the word is. They don't have a clue. Because the Apostle Paul makes it very clear in the word. He says, to the world, the preaching of the gospel, the word of God is foolishness to the world. It makes no sense to the world. Spend a half a day in church hearing the word, and I hear some of you give money down there too. Are you crazy? <laughs> Something called tithing. What? What's wrong with you? But the Bible says, to us who believe the word of God is the power of God and the salvation and victory. And life to us. Those of us who put our trust in Jesus. The word is life giving. And power. Every area of our, of our life. That's why. We spent half of our day. Come to the house of God. And hear the word. And to give God praise. Because that's life giving to us. God said we need it. Amen. And I know some people. Just in closing. Now, our spirit, our spirit person, you're a threefold person, spirit, soul, and body. We know that from the word. Your spirit is the part of you that gets saved. When you call on Jesus, you're born again. Your spirit's a new creature in Christ. And your spirit person needs food. Just like your body needs physical food and your mind needs intellectual food, your spirit needs spiritual food. Some of us would never think of going a day without feeding our bodies. Our bodies start screaming at us. What are you doing to me? I need food. Right? But sometimes, like somebody said, you can feed your body three meals a day, and, but your spirit gets a couple of cold snacks a week. No. Let's come on. Let's get our spirit, man, because he's alive in there. And the word of God and the spirit of God, and coming to God, you're getting a spiritual meal right now. And your spirit can be satisfied. But I can't, I can't come to your house and preach to you every day. You've got to take time yourselves and feed upon the word. And let the power of the word of God revolutionize your life. And power you out of every trouble and every crisis. Bring healing to your body. Bring joy and peace to every area of your life. And you can live a life of victory unto God. Do you receive the word of God today, church? Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give him praise and thanksgiving for the word. Father, we're so thankful for the word of God today. We give you praise for it, Father. We so appreciate you giving us your precious, holy, written word. Father, may our hearts be hungry for you, for your word, for your life-giving sustenance and to our spirit, our soul, and even our bodies, the joints, and our marrows. I pray today, Father, for your people that they would have a fresh hunger for the things of God, a fresh hunger for your word that brings life, brings health, wholeness, victory in every area, in Jesus' name. And may we be a light to the world. May we be a light to our neighbors, to our family members, to our co-workers, and the how, those that desperately need Jesus. Father, may we be a light. May we shine brightly because of your word and be a light to those who need to call upon the Lord today. And now as we're in a spirit of prayer, I, I, I pray anyone here in the house that 
you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, today's your day. Those of you watching today as well, if God is moving upon your heart, you feel the Holy Spirit prompting in your hearts, beating fast, you, you sense something in your, in your, in your spirit, in your, that's God saying, I love you, I sent Jesus. He died on a cruel cross, He took your punishment for all the sins of your entire life if you will but call upon Him and make Him your Lord. Many of us did that. I know I did it many years ago. What a release. What, 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 a, what a precious time that was. Or maybe you're here today and you say, you know, Pastor Fred, I, I, I am a Christian, but I've been doing my own thing and going my own way. I want to rededicate my heart and my life to the Lord. I'm done with going my own way. I want the way of God. I want my divine destiny to be fulfilled. So if that's you today, you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, just lift up your hand very boldly. Right, you're, right where you're seated, lifted up your hands. God bless you. Thank you. I see your hand over there. Anyone else with an uplifted hand, include me in this prayer. Thank you. Yes, God bless you. Thank you. I see your hand over there. Anyone else want to say, don't leave me out. You feel God stirring upon your heart. I want to call on Jesus, or I'm going to rededicate my life. Anyone else, I'm going to pray in just a moment with an uplifted hand. Thank you. God bless you. Those of you watching as well, let's say this simple prayer. Let's help them. Let's say this all together. Pray this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, please say it out loud. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me. I make Jesus Christ both Lord and Savior of my life. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I commit my life to you for a new start and a fresh beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can you give a round of applause? Come on, all those that called on Jesus. We're so we're rejoicing with you today. Wow, what a beautiful, powerful time that is. Thank you so much. And by the way, uh, if you've not done so yet, please stop by in the foyer. If you called on Jesus or you committed your life, if you, if you don't have a Bible, we have a, a place over there where you can get a Bible. We have other materials. You can get prayer. Please stop by and do that. And we, we just want you to know we love you. We're rejoicing with you. What a beautiful decision. Please come back to church. I tell people, come to church for one year, as often as you can, and the Word of God will transform your life. And so bring family members, bring friends. They need Jesus too. And so we encourage you to do that. Hey, don't forget today's Connect Sunday. Stop by some of the tables, see what's going on at Grace Life. See how you can get involved. Also, we have ice cream, soft serve ice cream out there. And so that's going to be featured in the cafe. So make sure you stop and get that as well. Amen. All right. You ready for the blessing? Lift up your hands. I'm going to speak this blessing over everyone here in the house, those of you watching as well. As your pastor, may the Lord bless. May the Lord protect and prosper your way, you and your loved ones throughout this week. According to Psalm 91, that you dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. And may God give his angels charge concerning you that no evil plague, disaster, or calamity comes near your dwelling. And may God place you at the right place at the right time with the right people. And may the power of his word be a priority in your life. And finally, may his shalom, peace, and rest be your constant companion throughout this week. In Jesus' name, say amen if you receive that. God bless you. We love you. You are dismissed.